The next thing I'd like to introduce in our sequence is the idea of using a non-dimensional variable to generalize problems in fluid mechanics. Often when we're working in an engineering problem, we don't want to have to go through and solve, say, the Bernoulli equation or the conservation of mass equation every single time for every single problem, that there are some particular shapes and um, situations that are very common and what we can do is use what we call a non-dimensional variable to generalize that problem and the reason I'm introducing it now even though we will go through it later on in the semester in some of the later videos and in class is that it, this particular one the pressure coefficient follows along very nicely from the Bernoulli equation where you actually we're going to use the Bernoulli equation to generalize the problem and develop something that we can generalize about the entire a particular flow and then we can use that instead of having to go back and, and start at the beginning and solve through the, the Bernoulli equation each time okay so the way we're going to do it, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this particular case of a uniform flow moving from left to right and there's a cylinder obstruction in that flow and that could be a bridge pier in the water or a circular building circular skyscraper and what we're interested in because pressure is ultimately what determines the forces on that is what that pressure distribution was or is because it's not the absolute pressure it's that difference in pressure around the body that's going to determine that force and so the idea is to generalize the Bernoulli equation so that we can develop a pressure coefficient that defines what the pressure distribution is around that entire cylinder. Okay, so as you might expect, we're going to start with the Bernoulli equation. And I'm going to write the Bernoulli equation between point zero and an arbitrary point on the surface of that cylinder. So it's going to look like this. We're going to say P0 over gamma plus V0 squared over 2G plus Z0. So that's the Bernoulli equation at point zero. And then it, the arbitrary point on the cylinder, it's going to look like this. It's going to be P just over gamma plus V squared over 2G plus Z. And so now we're leaving this in a general term. It's just P, V, and Z. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that the elevation changes across the cylinder are small or zero if this is a horizontal flow. And so when we do that, we're going to say that Z is approximately Z naught and those terms cancel. So we're going to get rid of this one and we're going to say Z is approximately Z naught. And we're going to get rid of this one for the same reason Z is approximately Z naught and assume that they don't have much effect on the flow. Okay. And then what we want to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation slightly so that I can get that differential pressure because often that's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in the absolute values of P and P naught so much, but the difference between them, P naught minus P or vice versa, P minus P naught. So we're going to write it that way. So we're going to write P minus P naught is equal to rho over two times V naught squared minus V squared. So here I've just rearranged some things. I've um, multiplied through by G and then brought the row over. And so we end up with this equation here that defines a differential pressure relative to the upstream pressure for the entire field around the circle based on what the velocity is at that point on the surface. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is multiply this through by the dynamic pressure. So if we recall the dynamic pressure is rho over two V naught squared. And this is not the traditional formulation of it. It is the formulation that gives us something that meets the criteria of our Bernoulli equation, the way the Bernoulli equation is set up. But it's effective, effectively the dynamic pressure, or you can even see it's one half rho v naught squared, is basically the kinetic energy that's in the system at this point, at the upstream point. So we're going to multiply through by that, and then we're going to end up with another term. And so we're going to have P minus P naught divided by one half rho v naught squared is equal to one minus v over v naught squared. Okay, so 
But now this gets is where it gets a little interesting because if we look at this equation, we immediately see that the right hand side of the um, equation is v over v naught is the only terms with units, and because they're the same unit, so they're going to be meter per second or length over time over length over time, that's going to be dimensionless. There is no value associated. There's no dimension associated with this term. And we can actually show that for the other side as well. So let me go back up here. I want to just want to walk you through the fact that it is actually a um, non-dimensional variable. So P minus P naught, that's going to be force over length squared. So we'll just write that. So the units are force over area, which is force over length squared. And then the bottom equation is going to be one half of rho. Rho is going to be mass divided by length cubed times v naught squared, which would be length squared divided by time squared. Okay. And then we can rearrange that. So I'm going to break out for the units of force. Okay, so now let's rewrite the top part of the equation. We're going to get m mass times length over time squared length squared divided by, let's just multiply this all through. So we're going to have mass times length squared divided by length cubed time squared. Okay. Right? And so we end up with one. So this matches up and we get a value of one. It's non-dimensional. And so what this is, is that both sides of the equation now are non-dimensional. And so we end up defining this term, the pressure coefficient, okay? And, or the coefficient of pressure. And so we, we define it something like this, where we have CP, coefficient of pressure, is equal to P minus P naught over one half rho v naught squared. Okay, and so this is the first non-dimensional variable that we've introduced in our fluid mechanics class. And we'll come again, come back to that later in the semester. Okay, so what, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a very common practice in fluids, and we'll see it again in chapter seven. And the pressure coefficient doesn't vary whether the flow is fast or slow. It doesn't matter what the fluid is. We put in the density of that fluid, the upstream velocity, and the pressure difference, and that gives us a number that defines what the pressure would be like at any point along that cylinder. And so changes in the fluid, changes in fluid speed, they're all incorporated into this pressure coefficient, which we can go out and measure. So we can put a cylinder in a flow, put set V naught squared and measure the, measure the pressure distribution around that cylinder and get a CP that doesn't matter where the fluid is. It can be water, it can be air, and we can just m move it around. It's a very nice way to generalize this fluid mechanic problem so that we don't have to go measure the pressure around every single object. We can run an experiment in water and and change some things around and, and get the same result for air by changing the different variables, okay? So, a really good example of that is uh, Munson figure, in your book, Munson figure 9.17, okay? And you have, where it gives you a plot that looks something like this. We have theta, where theta is defined as the point, radial point around the cylinder, so theta moving from 0 to 180 on both sides of the cylinder, so this can go from 0 to 180 with a midpoint of 90, like that. So 90 would be perpendicular to the flow at the top and, or the bottom. And then we're going to have the coefficient of variation, Cp. And what we can do is in laboratory experience, we can actually plot that, and it looks something like this. Okay, and so what we've done is just generalize the Bernoulli equation and non-dimensionalize it so that we develop an answer that's going to work for any type of flow situation that involves a cylinder in a flow.
Okay, so that's the whole idea of non-dimensional variables, and I think you can begin to see how powerful those might be in fluid mechanics, especially in engineering problems where we tend to use very normal shapes for different things, rectangles, squares, ellipses, or circles, okay? Um, and so that's kind of the idea is that we, is we can simplify some of the work we have to do. However, it's really important to understand where those non-dimensional variables come from. And so this gives you, tells you where the pressure coefficient comes from. And again, later in the class, we'll spend some more time talking about some other important non-dimensional variables and how we derive those and where they come up in our different conservation equations um, or the Bernoulli equation or, or things like that. Okay, I'll see you next time.